T90. That's terrible. <laughs> What's going on? Nice door sounds. Yeah, my mic's way too sensitive. <laughs> right. Um, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is struggling a bit. I've done a bit too much streaming in the last couple of days, I think. Um, heading into this with game three then. With Zuppi leading 2-0, so it's kind of match point for him. Um, we have a Mongol war. Uh, obviously for game three, if you're familiar with the tournament rules, you can't pick Hunters, Mines and Aztecs and you can't pick one of the civilizations that was used in the previous game. So Britons and Spanish was off the table for both of them. Uh, and that means we see a Mongol war in game three with both players having that as their like second choice. And for the first time in this series, I think we've got a desert style Arabia, uh, which is looking insanely open for Zuppi. I mean, what the hell? <laughs> it's uh, pretty incredible actually he's only got this one back wood line the forward one is a pretty bit, bit of a joke and then everything else is really far away um, main gold you know just in the middle of nowhere second gold in this back right corner and then this third gold's not that easy to mine either and is quite vulnerable from this hill so right now I'm looking at this map and I'm thinking good luck to Zuppi because <laughs> I wouldn't want to play this uh, I'm surprised he didn't restart it, but the recorded games that I have only um, are like full games played, not restarts. So I don't know if any restarts were used. Um, and maybe Zuppi got to this point having already used his restart. I don't know. But if uh, he had his restart available and didn't use it for this game, I would be absolutely shocked. Um, meanwhile, for Vivi... Things are looking a million times better. Nice backward lines, nice back berries. Oh, with boar still for Zuppi. I'll keep an eye on that, but, but it's progress across the minimap. Um, but I'll just go back to looking at the maps for now. Um, main gold, pretty decent in terms of being close, but it is at the bottom of a massive hill, which makes it vulnerable. Um, meanwhile, Vivi's actually going to go for his own boar still while Zuppi continues to make progress. Uh, I wonder if he saw. Zuppi doing it and decided to reply in kind or whether that was his idea anyway but both players obviously with Mongol scouting they find their stuff so quickly and they can go forward and take the balls um, really early on so both players were in their opponent's base by like minute three or something should be actually failing a little bit here but he'll be able to get it and go back again I don't know why I've got all these graphs on actually There's too many graphs mm. Oh, there we go. I don't know if I had those graphs on for the entirety of the stream. I don't know whether you uh, you liked them or not, but um, they seem to take up too much of the screen. I only just kind of looked at them and thought, hmm. So Zuppi successfully getting that baller in from Vivi, but Vivi's struggling for the second time here, and Zuppi's actually going to come here and try and um, stop it from happening. Which he's going to do successfully, because the... HP on Vivi's scout is so low that he just can't even take one more hit from the boar. I think the boar does 7 damage. Um, I don't lame a lot, so... <laughs> um, may not be exactly right on that, but uh, yeah, I think that's a one-hit kill from the boar on the scout if he goes back, and obviously you need to hit the boar twice. So, Zuppi is going to have three boars in a Mongol war, which um, is great for him because this map is pretty difficult and he wants to be the one who is the fast player um, applying aggression to the opponent and obviously with mongol hunting bonus um, stealing a boar is even better because like you can have it work for you by getting that food in the bank so much earlier and also a tiny bit less rot as well makes a difference Zuppi also milling deer so he is pretty desperate to get up early I think I think we're going to see a very fast scout rush from him on low population and likewise Vivi you'd be expecting for him to go for the scouts um, but down one boar and with some of the most disobedient looking deer I've ever seen um, as Momano was to say we've got a Bambi here he's trying to push these and they're going around the oasis and just uh, refusing to do anything is he really trying to actually push them through there because that would be really ambitious you can take a deer to water, but you can't force it towards your TC. <laughs> I 
Yeah, these deer are going full Bambi mode, just not doing anything that Vivi wants them to do. Um, which means that he's it's going to be pretty decisive. Like, if you lose your boar, then but you manage to get some deer, then especially if they get like three or four because then it's more food than even the boar was, then you're you're gonna be okay. It's obviously a disadvantage, but you're gonna you can you can deal with it generally. But um playing against a Mongol player who's got three boars and has milled deer when you've got one boar and you can't take your deer. Ouch. I would not want to be in Vivi's situation at this point. And that's why he's walling. <laughs> I don't know what this village is doing. Unless he's gonna wall here like this. Tell me no. Tell me no. You're not gonna wall like that, are you? Because why won't I just wall here? Yeah. Ah, he's found some wood deer in the back as well. But he is gonna do this gigantic wall off. Oh my god. I mean, I can understand why he's trying to wall there because he wants to take a bit more mat for himself and secure more stone as well, which is really important in the Mongol war. But he's so far behind that, and now he's uh, because of the boar difference and the food difference and now he's got like six villagers out warning and expending massive amounts of wood doing it as well i feel like he's just putting himself further and further behind like this although there is an argument that he has to do it just to survive so zuppy up uh didn't go for a really fast scout rush um, went up on 25 population with 24 vills it's actually going straight to gold so um it could be going for archers, I guess. Although, um, like he's gonna have the resources to go to Castellanes really, really quickly when he gets there as well. And he might even kind of gamble a bit on the fact that Vivi is so far behind and uh, just try and go to Castellanes really early. Uh, perhaps not without doing any military, but uh, he's, you know, he's gonna be able to do it. If he wants to. I don't know how much more information he has. I mean he sees Vivi walling. So he knows Vivi is scared. Um, and he may choose to, choose to try and do it. See Vivi on the way to food ledge. But with just 200 food in the bank. Those deer have really helped him out though. Has to be said. Um, I think he's going to be. Trying to just. Do a, some kind of fast castle behind his walls, perhaps as well. Looking at like how late he went up, which was obviously kind of forced onto him. But whether he's going to have the food to click up anytime soon, or indeed the wood to build his buildings, remains to be seen. He's actually palisaded all these wolves to try and keep an eye on. If oh my god, six wolves! Somebody fetch Benwano. <laughs> in reference to the Jaguar video that you, many of you may have seen by this point. Stable Blacksmith FC from Zuppi, by the looks of it. So, gonna be knights from him. Um, I mean, other option with, with this would be like a camel defense boom, but really, so far ahead, I don't see why he wouldn't just go and kill Vivi. So far ahead in terms of resources that he's claimed at this point. I mean, if we look at this, well, actually, I guess it hasn't really worked out. I guess Vivi has managed to retask his village, his villages onto food, um, alternative food sources to make up for that boar. But I'm surprised. I guess what we, Vivi had dropped more farms a lot earlier uh, to kind of compensate for that. Whereas Zuppi, because he had the three boars and everything, he didn't um, really drop any farms until now. But Nevertheless, the actual timing of getting the food um, has been a big deal because Zuppi has clicked up to the castle age at 1308 with a 25 plus 2 population, I think. No, 20, 25 plus 3 castle age. Whereas Vivi is only now building that market blacksmith to get up. So he's, And the thing is, he's going up with a market blacksmith, which is going to mean that he's uh, not... I don't think he's yet built a barracks anywhere, so it's gonna mean another 350 wood just to get a barracks plus a stable or an archery range to try and fight with. Uh, whereas Zuppi already has that stable done to try and start building knights and applying some pressure and taping, taking map control. Um, and Zuppi also getting economic upgrades in, like he got a double bit axe earlier, like slightly earlier, about 30 seconds, Vivi only just getting it now. 
um, and Zoppy also able to get a horse collar, gold mining, whereas um, Vivi may not be doing those just yet. Yeah, it's unlikely. I mean, you look at his resources. So even though resources gathered were kind of similar when I looked on the achievements, the difference is that Zuppi had them in the bank a lot earlier and it just set set him up for progressing through the game better. Um, not spending wood on stuff like a market either or all these walls. And it means that he's well ahead now, I would say, even if he is four villages behind. It's not going to matter too much. He'll only be sort of three, one villager behind by the time um, Vivi actually reaches the castle age. Forward siege workshop on this hill, really nice. Uh, Zuppi's got a stone wall behind it. He did see it with his scout on its last three HP now. Uh, and going down. So I guess we're going to see knights and siege push from Vivi. From Zuppi. He just stopped doing that. Just going to be one stable knights for now. Um, doesn't really have enough on gold to be doing that. Or indeed enough farms to be pumping from two stables and maintain villager production. And he doesn't need a flood of knights. He mainly needs some and then just uh, to, some siege weapons to break in. Which he'll be able to do pretty easily from with the benefit of the hill, I think. So let's see what Vivi's response is to this. He knows what's coming, because I'm pretty sure that scout did see the siege workshop. Yeah. Gonna do barracks, he's gonna do monastery, so monk defence against the knights. But obviously Mongols can't go and convert the siege weapons or anything like that, lacking redemption. Going to be stable as well, so I guess we'll see camels from him. Um, but this is a uh, very kind of like defensive posture from Bibi. He's just doing some, doing stuff to defend his perimeter, but that he won't be able to attack with later on. Obviously, though, defending his perimeter is all that's on his mind at this point. Uh, and the thing, like, when I was looking at the, the, the big palisade walls that Vivi was doing, it's so tough, unless you want to re reinforce them all with stone, like, how are you going to get out here and stop people breaking through this wall all the time? I mean, yeah, he's going to keep house walling now, but he needs more stone to reinforce that, because if you just palisade wall a huge section of the map, um, and especially if the opponent attacks a bit earlier, it can be so tough to defend such a massive perimeter. Zuppi being forced to delete one of his knights that's going to be converted by the monk and now that one knight has picked up a mangonel because Zuppi's own knights, well the one knight and then the second one coming in, just slightly out of place, um, kind of uh, sloppy by Zuppi I would say, just slightly badly positioned and um, Vivi's done okay now actually in terms of forcing this back just for now, like, Zuppi will obviously probably either be massing more or change up his approach slightly perhaps to in include some uh, light cavalry to take down a monk or he may just kind of uh, it's going to do a monastery of his own and just try and convert more knights back actually onto a second TC as well which I'm presuming is a difference with Vivi I don't think Vivi's going to be on so yeah he's just now going to start building a second one on the gold but in the meantime he's only got a couple of villages mining gold at all which isn't much not going to be able to sustain building more knights and monks off the back of that but uh, looks like Zuppi's villager in forward Manganel is going to get caught out here. So Zuppi's ability to push into Vivi is really being slowed down at this point. But on a macro sense he's well ahead. Two villagers ahead and on two TCs as opposed to one. Second down centre for Vivi, still not up. He's actually completely ceased collecting gold whilst adding the more villagers to try and get that TC done. Vivi's starting to add more knights now. Still on the one stable. Doesn't need to be on two for now. It's because he can't get into the base and he's not going to take a straight up much of it. Like Vivi's not going to be taking straight up fights in open ground anymore. Oh. 
kind of look at the like the rest of the map in terms of extra resources on the map. We see two extra golds of both down here, and Zuppy with the way he's taking control of the map, and especially this white half, going to be poised to take those later on as well if he needs to. Uh, like Vivi is very much backed into a corner here, and although he's got space and he's got all of his resources accessible to him, apart from a slightly vulnerable main gold, um, in map control terms, he he will be struggling, I think. He's going to try and sneak out and collect up a couple of relics though, at least. He's up here doing the same from his forward monastery. But Zuppy actually has two more relics over here. I don't know if he spotted them. Actually, no, he doesn't even know where his, where his third gold is, actually. Um, but he may find those later on. Either way, Vivi is almost certainly not going to take them. Hasn't found them either, but his knight's going in that direction, but probably just to try and get some kind of flanking raid on, Viv on Zuppy's base, probably heading towards this backward. Uh, and somehow Zuppy managed to steal that monk, that relic from under the nose of Vivi's own monk. Uh, Vivi was there first, but maybe he just walked next to the relic and didn't pick it up. I was sure that was going to be Vivi's one. Coming into this part of the map, he's going to run into TC, so not going to do too much damage. Zero armor on the knight as well, so literally no staying power in the TCs. Zuppy. Just continuing to prod and poke from on that hill with the one manganel. Not going to tremendously worry Bibi at this point, but something he will have to deal with in the, the medium term. This knight has an absolute suicide wish. Zuppy stretching to 7 villager lead now, but only doing just now doing wheelbarrow, which is kind of late timing, especially with the number of farms that he has already. Second Manganel, going to increase the urgency of Zuppy's attack from this hill though, and that blacksmith will go down now, so um, there will be a hole from which Zuppy can go into if he wants to, but he doesn't really have the knights or the upgrades to do that just yet. He's just keeping his knights on the field to protect his siege weapons in it, as well as the monks, serving more or less the same purpose. Don't know what this monk's trying to do. <laughs> but knight raiding with no upgrades kind of isn't going to achieve really anything really, uh, especially with just one or two knights. This monk just come to try and convert the villagers of, uh, of Vivi. He's actually going to do it as well. <laughs> I don't know why he doesn't just go back with that monk and try and keep it at home. It'll probably be more use. Preaching the word of the Mongol god to the, the Mongols. Not very effective. Just go home and defend your, your city from attack. <laughs> Uphill Manganel shot hitting Zuppy, but obviously the hill bonus means that Manganel doesn't go down and can continue to lay siege to the edge of Vivi's base. Zuppy's gonna make sure that one converted villager doesn't start any kind of shenanigans out of the fog of war nearby on his own base. The first actual night upgrade coming in for either player now, he's gonna go for Bloodlines. Also doing a camel, so we could see one or two more camels from him to help counter Vivi's knights. Zuppy's knights, even. I don't know how many times. Yes, extra camel there. I don't know how many times I'm going to keep saying that I need to stop mixing the two players' names up. Scale barding armor as well. I almost feel like with no um, no arch units on the back. On the map, I'd rather see forging done than armor, just because you're gonna do more damage to the mangonels and the monks. And like, when it's just the knight versus the knight, I can't think that plus one attack versus plus one defense actually makes a difference. It'd be interesting to hit those two against each other and see if it actually changes anything. But it would surely just still come down to the first hit. Uh, 
bit of dodgeball going on here. Um, actually, Vivi has done best with a hit because Zuppy actually had three Manganels on this hill, and I'm pretty sure Vivi hasn't made three Manganels at this point. Oh, he's trying to fast wall this all off quickly, but uh, there is a hole, and the knights are going to get in. They're not probably going to deny this castle. I mean, maybe they could do with the help of the monks and the Manganel. But Zuppi's on his way to in play. He's been completely undisturbed at home and he's only made a few knights. Um, and although his kind of wheelbarrow is pretty late and everything, I don't know if he would have it far, actually. His farming economy has been pretty powerful just because just he hasn't been producing too much. So, being able to go to Imperial Age pretty early. But doesn't necessarily have the best things to take advantage of. It's not like he's going to be going to the Imperial Age and already having done castles and be ready to go with Elite Mangadai and stuff straight away. He's only now putting down his first castle. Um, he's going up with just 90 villagers, um, which won't be enough to get all of the upgrades for Elite Mangadai and if to start pushing straight away. It will take some time for him. And he's just now starting to do his archer upgrade as well with Fletching coming in. Losing most of this forward push as well, which means he won't probably deny the castle of Vivi for any time longer. I guess Zuppi feels like he's done enough though in terms of um, just applying pressure to Vivi, especially on the back of like that boar steel and the way it kind of snowballed into the rest of the game, um, that he's now uh, clearly ahead in terms of gonna be getting those all important upgrades for the Mangidai and getting an Imperial Age Mongol army much faster than Vivi will. How are we doing in terms of relics in the bank? We've got one for Vivi. Zuppi with two but he may well lose his monastery soon. Vivi's gonna push out with a few knights and Camel's trying to do a bit of raiding but uh not really gonna achieve much. Wonder if Zuppi is building any more capitals anywhere else. He's got the stone in the bank for another one. This Mangadai coming out. Could actually easily pick off a Mangadai just with one Mangadai with Bodkin as well, actually. Uh, you see, he's getting everything. He's got getting ballistics, getting prescriptions, getting bracer, he's got thumb rings, bloodlines. Almost everything is going to be done in a minute or two. Parthian Tactics is obviously one big one that he, along with the rest of the armor, but Vivi oh, is going to be in the Imperial Age in two minutes time, by which point uh, Zuppi will have almost all the upgrades on his Mangidai, apart from Elite, actually, at this point. But can already add another castle, actually, which is going to do here and take control of this gold. Actually, it's only a, that's only the second castle, isn't it? I was saying a while ago that he could add another castle, but he didn't actually do it at that point. He was concentrating on defending against the raiding. Taking control of the extra map goal is also always good. But Vivi himself is actually doing pretty well. Um, he did kind of keep pace with... Zuppi in terms of like villager numbers and stuff and he did boom up pretty nicely in the back and he's got two castles up and a decent amount of Mangidai out the only thing is the upgrade difference but uh it re it's really going to come down to that I think I think because Zuppi is still trying to mass Mangidai he's like gone for upgrades before he necessarily had the army on the map to upgrade um, but if he doesn't mass up quickly enough to start doing something then he may well find that by that point Vivi is back in, in with a shout in terms of um, having the army army numbers already there but I think this is intelligent from Zuffy because he's basically just putting castles in a position where he can just start pushing with trebs and doesn't even necessarily need to have uh, the numbers quite yet because he will be sheltered by the castles when he starts uh, laying siege with the trebuchets
And that extra castle is going to go from Vivi. I wonder if he could see it before it went up. I should have checked that actually, because I was surprised he wouldn't try and deny it, but I guess he probably couldn't see it. It was a bit too far away. You'd probably need like town patrol or something to get that. Which you always never see research, especially in 1v1. First couple of trebs out for Vivi as well, but Zuppy already with three. Um, and I think. No, there's actually no hill bonus. That That's one step down and then one step up there. But. Vivi losing a castle already, a masonry coming in for Zuppy, so his castles are going to be stronger and he's going to be able to sustain himself in the treb war much better as a result of that. Zuppy with fully upgraded his Mangudai, apart from Elite and apart from Parthian Tactics at this point, whereas. Um, Vivi is missing chemistry, the elite, and party tactics as well. So, chemistry, the difference right now means that Zuppi's Mangudai is going to be that tiny little bit more powerful. And now, this castle is going to be suffering from a little bonus where three trebs it's going to go down really fast. And that could be a problem because at that point, Vivi will have just lost his production. It doesn't seem to have another castle in the back or anywhere else on the map. Um, and Vivi, Zuppi is obviously producing for more castles than it anyway at this point. It seems like um, well, some people doesn't even really care about any Mangadai at this point. I wonder if he's got resources in the bank to do it. He does actually have them. He probably just clicked it down. I saw yeah, Elite Mangadai coming in. Uh, and Vivi doing it, apparently. But where is he doing it? Where is his castle? Here it is. But no, it's over. Too late. And GG and 3 0. So. I think a lot of that turned on the kind of, it's just a consequence of the early game. Um, Zuppi milling deer and stealing a boar, whereas uh, Vivi being down a boar, having to wall his whole map, wasting a ton of wood and villager time for about six villagers, and then not trying to push these deer forever and then just disobeying completely. And then he did actually mill these deer in the back, which kind of kept him in it for a while, but Zuppi was just always ahead. Um, kind of positioned himself nicely on the map just to keep the pressure up and boom behind completely untouched. Went up to Imperial Age and just kind of used castles to trebuchet push in. Just really kind of um, intelligent play by Zuppi really. Um, not trying to do too much with his advantage and potentially waste it and have it backfire on him but just being patient and doing the right things and positioning himself right on the map and that means that he wins this series 3-0 pretty convincingly. Um, so Vivi put up a good fight in a, a couple of the other games. Um, uh, especially with his Spanish strategy that he tried. That could very well have worked if Zuppi hadn't kind of reacted well by shifting his economy and getting up to the castle age and actually doing some crucial raiding with those Britain's crossbows. But that means Zuppi with another three points on the board. Um, and I think he will be very well placed in this group, actually. Um, I'm pretty sure that cements him firmly in the front running with Viper to go through. Um, and although I think that... I don't know if Zuppi's played one more set of games. But either way, Zuppi and Viper very much front runners in Group A. And Stark still very much in a chance, considering I don't think he's dropped any points at this point. Um... I'm not sure, apart from, I think, when he lost 3-2 to Viper. But uh, I think Stark v Zuppi is going to be massive. Um, 